It's an interesting thing to be, you know, quote unquote, in, in charge of deciding what the best film is. It's such an ephemeral notion. Um, it's quite obviously something that's quite subjective. We could find that we absolutely hate a film, but that the accomplishment is staggering and that the feat of it, the ambition was accomplished. But, you know, it's, I think to sort of like mitigate some bias and try and open yourself up to something new is the way, it's a sort of the reason that festivals exist is not just to sort of celebrate each other. It's to go like, has somebody said something that's gonna be surprising? Or has somebody done something that feels like it was really hard to do? Uh, whether you like it or not. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I think, um, you know, this festival in particular historically is, is, is in a positive way confrontational and political and I think that it's like very important for us to, I don't know, deprogram and be like fully open to newness. I think that the diversity and sort of, and the breadth of perspective is, is, gonna, is gonna provide us with some some new material that might be challenging and sort of like strange to adapt to. But I think the point is not to, uh, I don't know, I think like don't pick the one, pick the one that juts out. You know, if we all, if we all can't agree, that's probably because it's pretty good. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I don't know what everyone else thinks, but they should answer too. <laughs> yeah. It's very symbolic to be in Berlin. Berlin is a city that broke the wall, the actual wall uh, towards equality, freedom, and brought so many people together. And of course, this year with Ukraine, with Iran, with the earthquake, it feels like the whole world is disintegrating. We are all in a moment of transition, uh, especially now with Iran. And in a country like Iran that is a dictatorship, art is not only an intellectual or a philosophical thing, it's essential. It's like oxygen. So doing art and being an artist is something beyond because your existence by being an artist is put into danger. Um, that's why for me, again, it's so amazing to be here this year uh, with everything that is happening in Iran. Again, back in Berlin after all these years and I'm happy that we can gather together and, and celebrate cinema, celebrate freedom, even though there is the world seems to be collapsing from everywhere uh, and I think that's what I appreciate a lot about Berlin, about Germany, about France, about Europe in the world of consumption that now we are consuming movies and series and we can still gather together and watch good movies and being in such incredible jury that we can discuss, gather, art and culture is a fire, we can all gather together and warm ourselves up. Um, and I'm really happy to be here to also fight still for freedom in Iran and in the world. Everybody wants to get everyone back to the theater and be supportive. And as one of the directors that I work with uh, in Aritu said, you know, it's a miracle for a director to get a movie made these days. And so let's all support each other's work and I, that's the sense I feel from everybody I work with, so. Thank you. Actually, in 1951, I think, or 1950, Isidori Su in, uh, in uh, Traité de Bave d'Eternité, Venom and Eternity is the title in English, which is a beautiful, probably not very well seen movie. He said, cinema is the industry of money and stupidity. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's a big truth in that. And uh, maybe a place like this sometimes make a little bit less of money for the film, which I think it's great to see films which are not made with a lot of money and with less stupidity than, than Isu said it 70 years ago already. Sorry. Sorry to spoil the party. <laughs> I always get the feeling that a cinema is a place that you have to nourish, you have to look after it. A little tender loving care is required and that's probably a social or political requirement. Some kind of commitment needs to be there. 
If you see a responsibility, perhaps it, education begins in school, but it carries on in the cinema. We need it. I, I can also add something to that, is that when cavemen, they gather together to tell stories, the language was invented. I mean, the whole civilization is somehow coming to life by telling stories. So I think as long as humanity exists, we will want to tell stories and gather together, maybe in a cinema, to, to see it, watch it together. And I think no one, no industry can take that dream away from humanity that really encouraged civilization to, to come to this point, storytelling, and we keep telling stories. We have a responsibility to pick a film that uh, has an impact on us, no? and that uh, we feel that this push can be uh, good for, for the film and also for the filmmaker that uh, probably will be someone that we, we trust and, and we want to keep watching films by this person. It's an enormous opportunity to have a hand in, in highlighting beautiful things in a time where that's hard to hold. You know what I mean? I, I think it's... Um, it's, it's, it's the job of an artist to take a disgusting and ugly thing and sort of transmute it and put it through your body and pump out something more beautiful or more helpful, something considered and, and um, not something sort of like knee-jerk reactive. I think we're living in the most reactive, kind of emotional, um, emotionally whiplashed time. And uh, to sit and actually have a moment to like digress and look and see what people have pumped out of their own bodies and in response to the world that's falling apart around us. Um, that was an opportunity that I was like, obviously couldn't say no to, even though it is daunting to tell you about it here right now. <laughs> cool.